Welcome back to Set Streets Needs, guys. I'm Chris Bauer. I am here in Columbus, Ohio, in front of a Wendy's today. Now, that may not seem that special, but this Wendy's is close to where the original first Wendy's location is. And that location is no longer with us, so they've made this into sort of a shrine to that location and that company. Wendy's, of course, was founded here by Dave Thomas back in 1969 here in Columbus, Ohio. So we're going to go in, check out some of the history of Wendy's and why this location is important. See, before we first do that, i got to point out and give some love to 80stees.com. Uh, thank them for sponsoring this video, but I love this new Seinfeld shirt. Um, Putty, which of course was Elaine's off and on idiot boyfriend, played by Patrick Warburton, the great actor who played later played The Tick. One of my favorite TV shows. Um... I love this shirt. He, of course, was a mechanic in it. Uh, awesome shirt. I saw it on the site. I was like, I got to have that. So you too can have something like this or some of your other favorite TV show shirts. If you go to ADCs.com and check them out, they've got all your favorite shows and movies, all your favorite video games, all your favorite bands. Um, and uh, it's a pretty awesome website. They sponsor my channel. I already wear their shirts, so it's like a match made in heaven. Check them out by clicking the link down in the description and check out 80stees.com. And uh, without further ado, let's go uh, check out some square hamburgers. restaurant uh -uh. got some cool collectibles Ooh, check out that Wendy's watch that's pretty cool you got coins and pins I like that There's Wendy, or I think her first name, actual first name is Melinda, but her siblings couldn't pronounce it quite right, and it used to come out Winda, and then of course the nickname became Wendy, and then that's what he named the fast food establishment when he started the first one. She actually is a franchise owner of Wendy's herself these days. That picture of her and her dad was taken in front of the first Wendy's downtown Columbus. She's wearing her iconic outfit that used to hang in the paintings behind him in the commercials. That's her and her dad. Dave, of course, passed away in 2002. So he's been gone a long time now. And of course, the greatest fast food ad campaign ever done. Where's the beef? Jonathan Winters, that's awesome. He 
some of their past food offerings. Check this out. This is the original griddle for the burgers from the first store. The test griddle. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Oh, look at those salt and pepper shakers, Frosties. <laughs> that's cool. Let's check these pens out. Those are so cool. Man. Yeah, those are pretty neat. Dave's Way. Fresh stuffed pitas. That's pretty awesome. <clears throat> the early days. I remember they were one of the first to have a salad bar back in the early 80s, too. I remember their salad bar. Try the fettuccine. It's fabulous. Wendy's, where you get the best burgers in the business, introduces the new Super Bar. If you eat all that, I won't be responsible. With delicious foods like Mexican, Italian, and our garden spot, so you can make a meal that's as individual as you are. And I'm going to some of that. And for one low price, get unlimited seconds. What dessert is that? All of them. The all-you-can-eat buffet at Wendy's new Super Bar. Only your fourth trip. Of course, the chili. They were definitely one of the first fast food places, if not the only one, to have baked potatoes. That was definitely a big deal, and those are still around. Just like old Pizza Hut's, Wendy's was known for their Tiffany lamps that used to hang over each of the tables. I ate under many of those when I was a kid. You can see them in the background of that photo. They were in every restaurant. <clears throat> I like these old logo designs. That's pretty neat. Check that out. All in pencil. That's pretty cool. And of course, right above them talking about the Tiffany lamp, they've got one of the originals hanging here just like it used to above all the tables and all the old restaurants. All the old Wendy's had them. Wow. But there's only a few of those left. It's crazy. The original menu board there at the drive-thru. That's awesome. Burger prices have gone up a bit. Just a scotch. This is a map of all the different Wendy's now. They all started right here. That's a cool map. So it all originates right here from Columbus and spreads out all over the world. God, look at this location all the way down here. Near the tip of South America. You can check these out. Down in New Zealand. They skip Australia. Got them over here in Asia. Different parts of Asia. Some of the other Pacific Islands, probably the Philippines. Uh -uh. Wow, it looks like the middle. Middle East countries. I'm not exactly sure on world geography without <laughs> names of the countries. Okay, let's face it, I'm kind of dumb. That looks like it might be in Russia. Uh, again, could be wrong, but either way, a lot of locations. Got a Dave's Double. So a lot of people, just in case you don't know about the square hamburger, poor Wendy's, is uh, that comes from the philosophy when they first started that uh, freshness and quality. Dave, uh, his whole thing was that Wendy's don't cut corners. So the idea was you know, they don't skimp on anything. So even their burgers are square. They don't cut corners, which is a fun plan words. But the other reason is he liked the idea of it being square so that people could see it would stick out from the from underneath the bun so that people could see the quality of the meat. 
they could see it from underneath the bun. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's where the square burgers at Wendy's come from. And of course, as Dave was fond of saying, in the more than 800 commercials he did for Wendy's, the beef is never frozen, always fresh. And it is always good. So David Thomas got his start at KFC. He was working at a restaurant in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, back in the 50s when Colonel Sanders was traveling um, with his chicken franchise recipes. I mentioned in my KFC video that Sanders went on the road with his chicken recipes and he would franchise, he would sell it to different restaurants if they would sell his recipe, his chicken, and the franchise uh, fee was five cents a bird, five cents a, uh, a chicken that you sold. And he would just get in his car and travel around the U.S. signing up restaurants. And Dave was a cook at one of those restaurants that he came to sell at. And Colonel Sanders and Dave hit it off very quickly. They became friends, even when Dave was just a cook there. And then not too long after, Dave had the opportunity by the restaurant's owner to come take up, move up to Columbus and take charge of two or three locations of that restaurant here in Columbus that weren't doing well. And, uh, and if he could turn those restaurants around, the owner told him he would give him a stake in that, in that company. So Dave took him up on it. And he moved up there and started selling them and made them into KFCs or made them into Colonel Sanders chicken, started selling chicken. He is actually the one that Dave Thomas originated the turning bucket sign of KFC, the big bucket sign, and convinced Sanders to start putting his likeness on the chicken and sell it as, you know, become the, the face of the company, so to speak. Dave was so successful at KFC that he sold, in 1968, sold all of his shares back to Colonel Sanders, restaurants and shares, for $1.5 million, which is like $14 million in today's money. And then immediately sunk that money into starting his own burger restaurant, which he named after his daughter Melinda, or as they called, the family called her, Wendy. He started the first one here in Columbus, not too far from here, in 1969. And then by 1973, I believe, he was already franchising these. And he did something unique in franchising that really exploded growth. Instead of selling franchising rights to one location, he sold franchising rights to an entire city or region. And that really took off. A lot of companies would buy franchising rights and they would own all the restaurants in that city for Wendy's. And he was able to open a thousand restaurants in his first hundred days once he started doing that. Once he started doing that, franchises started popping up everywhere. They quickly rose to over 2,000 locations by the end of the 70s. In 1984, they did a little ad campaign with a few old ladies that were wondering a question when they looked at the burger from the other chain that they were getting burgers from and one of them simply asked where's the beef in a really funny way and boy that took over pop culture <laughs> When you drive to Wendy's and order a single, you get more beef than the Whopper or the Big Mac. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, you never have to ask, where's the beef? It was even uh, the presidential election that year. I forget the candidate's name, but he even said it in a stump speech. It was everywhere. Where's the beef? That was a huge tagline. I made that little old lady famous too. So the first location, downtown Columbus, or near downtown Columbus, was obviously a very special location, but it was a very old building. It was in sad and desperate need of repairs. 
and they just finally ended up closing it. I think it was in 2012. It could be wrong on that date. It had a lot of this kind of decor in it. So they went ahead and they were building this new one not too far from there, moved it here. And so this is the basically official, well, the unofficial official first location now. We're as close as you can get to the one because the original is gone. But in spirit, you're within a few miles of it and it's got all the memorabilia and accoutrement as uh, some would say of a historic Wendy's, so even though it's a modern one. So it's still pretty cool. I started Wendy's with one restaurant and a philosophy. Give people a hamburger fixed the way they want it and don't make them wait for it. Given that, why would anyone go anyplace else? Ain't no reason. Like that, Mr. Smooth here gets his without onions. Uh, give me a single Wendy's hamburger with ketchup, pickle, and lettuce. Oh, add cheese. Oh, forget the ketchup and put on a tomato. Wendy's ain't no reason to go anyplace else. So this is a Waterford Crystal Wendy's burger. They paid $105,000 for it, made the order to be on display at the world headquarters. Wow, $105,000. That's a lot of Frosties. So this timeline mixes in important moments and dates for Wendy's with important dates for actual American history. So you got Sally Ride becomes the first woman on the space shuttle. 1972, the Watergate burglary happens. The miracle on ice when the U.S. hockey team beat Russia in the Olympics. This, of course, is the very first Wendy's building or restaurant. It was at the corner of Broad Street. Or opens, I'm sorry. Not the corner. It was on Broad Street in Columbus. Not too far from here. <clears throat> Early commercial. Neil Armstrong walks on the moon. That's pretty cool. Of course, you get know, all the different dates and timelines. <laughs> so Harry Potter makes the list. That's fun. Pretty cool. Well, guys, pretty cool. Little museum in here. But I think I've seen all there is to see in here. Everything else in this building is basically just a modern, very modern Wendy's. Um, you know, so the history's all in this room. Um, and of course, that sign, that's an awesome sign. Uh, first Wendy's sign right there that used to hang above the actual first Wendy's not too far from here until they closed it. Um, so if you guys are interested in Wendy's history or fast food history like I am, this is definitely uh, a, uh, a stop on the list, so to speak. You should definitely always want to try to stop by these important locations. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my stop by these important locations. I want to thank 80stees.com for sponsoring this video and this awesome t-shirt. And uh, thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one. Bye now.